everybody hear me? Good. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm going to give you a talk which is not related to Zika, it's related to a virus related to Zika, uh, which is dengue virus. And I'll just describe some work we've done over the last few years looking at the human antibody response to dengue. The reason we've done this is to try and inform us as to what antibodies are good uh, at neutralizing dengue and what antibodies indeed are poor at doing that and may enhance, enhance the disease. Now, I'm gonna, I've, I've been given 15 minutes. I'm going to have to go very fast because this talk needs about 25 minutes of introduction, let alone the data. So you're going to get a sprint through some, some immunology and some, um, so, some molecular virology, but I hope I can impart on you at least a couple of the, the, the points that we have. Um, so you all know dengue, and one of the advantages of giving a talk here is that you do. Dengue is a flavivirus. There are four of them. They're related to each other, but quite distantly. They're 35%, 30 to 35% different, and you know the story of sequential dengue infections um, and enhanced disease. Um, the bit of the virus that we're interested in today are the structural proteins, and the, and the virus shell has two proteins in it, precursor membrane protein, pre-M, and the envelope protein, E. So we're interested in this study in looking at antibodies to those two particular um, proteins in, in the uh, dengue virus. Um, so we used a method, I'm, I'm going to describe two different ways of looking at antibody responses. The first is to make um, antibodies from memory B cells. These are people who have recovered from a dengue virus infection a month to six months, indeed to several years after it occurred. Um, and effectively, this method involves EBV transformation of the B cells and in effect is, is pretty much exactly the same as you would do in terms of making a monoclonal antibody from mice. So when we did this experiment, um, we made some 300 um, odd monoclonal antibodies against dengue. We actually uh, included in that screen um, uh, antibodies against the NS1 protein, which took up about uh, a quarter of, of the population. I won't describe those in any more detail. But when we looked at the antibodies to the structural antigens, those are pre, M, and E, we were quite surprised because when we started these studies, we were particularly interested in generating antibodies against the envelope protein, as we felt these were most likely to be the neutralizing ones, and were quite surprised that the majority of antibodies we generated were actually against this precursor membrane protein. And those antibodies themselves were highly cross-reactive uh, amongst the dengue virus serotypes, more so indeed than the envelope protein. So having got this result, which was not what we were expecting, and indeed not what we were looking for, we had to concentrate on this yellow stuff, the precursor membrane protein antibodies, to see what they were indeed doing in, in, in dengue infection. So, um, You'll be familiar with, with a neutralization curve, and these are neutralization curves here with increasing concentrations of antibody uh, against the four dengue virus serotypes in four different colors. And the one thing you can see from this is that the precursor membrane protein antibodies can neutralize, but none of them, and indeed they're quite cross-reactive as that um, original um, uh, characterization showed, but none of them can neutralize above about 30, 40, 50 percent. Uh, and that's absolutely consistent amongst all of these antibodies. None of them are able to neutralize. Um, this is, I think, NT90s. But very few of them can neutralize above 50 percent. Whereas this is this classic antibody dependent enhancement assay. This most of you will be familiar with, but if you add an increase in concentration from zero up to high concentration of antibody to the virus before you place it onto an FC receptor um, expressing cell line, this case being a monocyte cell line U937, what you see is very low infection without antibody. And then as you add increasing amounts of antibody, it increases the infection of these cells or the virus output from these cells by many logs. Uh, and then at higher concentrations, it suppresses. So, they're poor at neutralizing. They can all cause antibody-dependent enhancement. 
And this is in contrast here to some envelope antibodies that we made in that study. Many of these, and I'll describe this in much more detail later on, many of these antibodies are very potent and neutralizing, and a number of them neutralize up to 100%. So the question was, why are these antibodies against pre-M not neutralizing the virus? But in, well, why are they partially neutralizing the virus and not able to fully neutralize the virus? And the answer to this lies in how the virus is produced inside the cell. And Zika is likely to be very similar to this. So the virus is produced in the cell, it buds into the ER, and then it passages through the Golgi. And in the Golgi, it gets exposed to an acidic pH, which is indeed exactly what happens when it enters its target cell. So there's a danger in the Golgi that it might actually conformationally change and fuse inside the cell before it's actually been re released. And to prevent that, this precursor membrane protein, which is the blue thing here, actually chaperones the, the fusion loop of the um, envelope protein so it cannot interact with host membranes inside the cell until it gets out. And during the progress through the, um, the Golgi, it is the, the precursor membrane protein is cleaved by furin protease, so that when the virus is released, the precursor membrane protein, this blue stuff, falls away, leaving you with a fully infectious virus. However, in Flavian, particularly in dengue, this furin protease cleavage is not complete. So this is the virus that goes into the Golgi, um, and this is the virus that, that um, should come out, these smooth things here. But this is a, a cryo-EM prep of dengue viruses. And what you see is that a large number of these virus particles contain quite a lot of the blue stuff, the uncleaved pre-M. So in fact, although one draws it as a binary process of an immature virus going into the Golgi and a mature virus with all the blue chopped off coming out, in practice, many virus particles contain differing amounts of precursor membrane protein. And the reason, therefore, that these, these antibodies do not fully neutralize dengue virus is there's no antigen on this virus here, so it's fully infectious, no pre-M. This virus here doesn't have enough pre-M on it to allow the antibody to fully neutralize it, yet it can still bind to it and drive antibody dependence enhancement. And probably there are some populations of viruses which are um, able to be neutralized um, by this preem, and these particles here, in which the, there's been no preem cleavage, are fully um, resistant. So there's an odd thing going on with dengue and flavias. They pass out through the cell. They have a leaky ability to cleave this precursor membrane protein. So, looking at this um, with primary human cells, here are some monocytes being infected with uh, with dengue virus. They can be infected um, without anybody, any, any antibody present at all. And then as you put on these anti preem antibodies, even to really high concentrations of many microgram per mil, all you get is more and more and more infection of these cells. So these anti preem antibodies are completely useless at neutralizing infection and indeed drive higher virus replication. So these are anti preem antibodies driving higher virus replication here are control antibodies, and here is uh, a, a dengue immune serum, which is actually able to, to uh, neutralize infection very effectively. So bottom line of this, anti pre -M, major part of the response, of dengue, response to dengue virus infection, pretty hopeless at neutralization, pretty potent at enhancement of infection, and if it was possible, it's the sort of thing you would want to exclude from a, from a dengue vaccine. So changing direction, um, this is another experiment looking again to generate dengue antibodies, but it's done at a different phase of the illness. This is done at the, near the acute phase. This is um, day seven, six, seven, eight after the onset of symptoms. Um, and the, the, the principle behind this is different than that, than the, 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 the making the antibodies from the um, plasma glass, uh, sorry, from the memory B cells. In this case, we actually sought activated B cells from these individuals, uh, and the activated B cell population increases greatly during infection, and actually particularly during dengue virus infection. So you sought the activated B cells, which have been pushed out during this acute infection. Single cells sought them, 
and then make uh, uh, PCR out the antibody heavy and light chains, put them into an expression vector, and express protein um, in 293T cells, and then you get antibodies that you can then screen for reactivity against dengue. So, what, so in this experiment, we made uh, about 150 antibodies against um, dengue virus surface proteins. We screened them by Western blots, finding antibodies that react against pre-M, as I've previously described, and finding antibodies that re uh, react to the envelope protein. But we also found a large number of antibodies here that did not react at all on Western blot, but only reacted to the, to, 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 to the envelope protein when it was present on the intact virus particle. So there's something special about these antibodies. They only, they only recognize virus. They don't recognize monomeric protein or, or, or indeed denatured protein, as shown on this Western blot. So we're very curious to work out what they do, were they, were they potent or not in, in neutralization. Um, the interesting thing about these antibodies is that they were not only very potent, this group of antibodies, the ones that react against just the virus, not only were they very potent at neutralizing the virus, but they were very cross-reactive between the four virus serotypes. This is quite unusual for dengue antibodies. So they were pan-reactive against all four virus serotypes, both by binding and, and neutralization. So the next experiment we did with these antibodies was to see what, whether they would be able to neutralize viruses that were made both in the insect cell, but also in primary human dendritic cells in this case. So we made viruses in either the insect or, or human cells, and then we tested the ability of this 150 antibodies to neutralize the virus. And from the back, you're limited by it and have to push it out of the way to gain, gain access. And so just very briefly, this is, again, a reverse genetic system, which is proving that this is the case. So we've got some, uh, we've mutated uh, the wild type virus is the blue one, and then the red and the green one are mutations through either the asparagine residue or the threonine residue to knock out that sugar. So for these ones here, um, if you knock out the sugar, the neutralization of the virus gets much worse, and that's... Uh, through dengue 1, 2, 3, and, 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 and particularly for dengue 4. Whereas interestingly for these other ones that need to push the sugar out of the way, if you take the sugar off this red line here, um, the antibodies actually become more effective. So just finally, why on earth do these dengue virus um, antibodies show such promiscuity amongst all the four dengue serotypes? And the answer actually is encapsulated in that little um, blue circle. And if you, you probably can't see from the back because I'm being challenged from here. There's a sort of green outline which is covered by this blue circle. And that's the actual antibody footprint. And what you can see in this blue circle is orange and yellow. The yellow are fully conserved amino acid side chains being bound by the antibody. And the orange stuff is actually contacts between the antibody irrespective of the um, amino acid side chain, right into the backbone of the, the peptide sequence. So this explains really why these are so promiscuous amongst these dengue viruses. They see something which is almost invariant between the different four dengue virus serotypes. So I've gone through that much too quickly, but I hope there are a couple of, um, a, a couple of lessons, one, one of which um, is that a detailed molecular analysis of the immune response like this really can get you into the sites on the virus that are particularly immunogenic and particularly good at targeting for vaccines. Alternatively, they can tell you about the stuff that you, if you can, um, you can avoid. Um, one of the lessons from this, uh, and this is particularly from the perspective of dengue vaccines, of course, anti pre responses are at best useless um, and at worst can, can, can drive increased virus replication and be harmful. Um, dengue pre is present in all live attenuated vaccines that have that are either uh, been through uh, phase three trials or about to go through phase three trials. Um, complex quaternary epitopes uh, are, are, are the most potent 
are neutralizing ones are probably those to target for, um, for vaccine responses. Uh, as a sideshow, actually, with dengue, and I hope this doesn't occur with Zika, um, but it is a cautionary tale, um, how you define uh, correlates of protection in dengue is a real challenge um, for vaccine trials because you can get quite good in vitro correlates of protection. Uh, and as you know, the vaccines have not proven to be quite as faithful um, as those in vitro correlates. Uh, and, and the thing we're following up with um, with these studies, of course, is to try to think about stabilizing that dengue envelope protein to make that dimer to use as a subunit vaccine in its own right, which would get around some of the problems with precursor membrane protein, which would be completely excluded there. Um, I've got a, a, a huge number of fantastic collaborators. Most of this work uh, has been performed in, in Thailand. Um, the structural work was led by Felix Ray at uh, in Pasteur, um, Hong Zhu did the cryo em um, Actually, the second set of antibodies we, we, we showed were made in, in Vietnam. Um, and I've got a fantastic colleague, Jutha Bit Mongol Spire, who works with me in, in London to do this work. Thank you.